What's up guys, it's Lord Saint, and today we have an outdoor project. This is probably, yeah, it is the first outdoor project that I've recorded on my channel. And for me, it's a, a bit of a bittersweet one. And if you can see behind, hold on, let me get this open and then. Okay, hopefully that is better for you guys. So let's start that over. It's Lord Saint and today we have a chop and immediate prop of my Neon Pothos. As you can see here, it is time. You may not even be able to see the absolute top, uh, but the top of my shade house is about, we'll call it eight and a half feet in total. Um, and the Neon Pothos it has definitely achieved and i'll give you guys another angle so you can see what i'm talking about here what we're talking about here this neon pothos has has done its thing on this eight foot wood pole uh now tons of controversy about the wood poles we'll get to that another day just know south florida is the absolute idea climate for me to use nothing but wood out here no moss no nothing else wood just works out just fine and this is of it so this Neon Pothos has reached the top of my eight foot host that I've given it, it's wood pole, and it's begun to fenestrate. And it is telling me absolutely I cannot put another leaf out at the height of this shade house. So what does that mean? What do we do with this Neon Pothos to keep it going? And the simple answer is I'm going to chop and repot the top cutting. It's all I can do in hopes that I can continue the size and growth that we're seeing up here. And like I said, it's fenestrating. The leaves are ginormous. I featured it in previous uh, reels. I made a video about it on four days of giant pothos in my care. But we've got to, uh, we, we've got to chop it down. So it is very bittersweet, but this is a good thing. Uh, I love when my plants mature like this. This is the pursuit of what I'm trying to achieve here. Um, somebody asked me recently, I guess I did a video and they saw all these plants in the back and they said, how do you enjoy those plants if you can barely navigate between them? And I said, don't worry about it, sweetheart. This makes me happy. I know exactly what plants are where uh, they are in this, in this uh, shade house. And I've had them since they were tiny and seeing them like this lets me know that I'm doing something right down here in my shade house and that makes me happy. So for you, it may look like a crowded uh, mess, but to me, it's progress. It's three to four years of learning what these plants love and three to four years of plants flourishing in my care. So this makes me happy. Uh, but today I'm going to show you guys because I get a lot of questions on how do I continue growth on a wood pole? Do I chop? What do I do? And you'll see it today. But the simple answer is I pick a point and I chop and I slowly pluck the plant off of the wood and I throw it right back into a new, uh, a new home. And the new home today is going to be, I already have one ready. It's a new wood host ready to go and all of mine hang so if you haven't watched my video check back to the first video that i have actually on the channel you'll see uh where i talk about the shade house um and there's a few videos that or a few videos after that i talk about the wood host and how i construct it and place the plants on it so we'll do that today i'll try to make it a quick one <laughs> uh it's going to be a lot of me breathing funny and, and all that stuff while I'm cutting and figuring out what I'm going to do. I try not to think too hard while I'm doing these projects. I just kind of let it go and, and get it done. Okay. So without further ado, let's get to it. Um, now the first thing, let me get my shears here. The first thing we want to do is just kind of figure out, or the first thing I do is I figure out where I want to cut 
this uh, pothos. Now I don't want to just do one little cutting. I want to give it at least a few. I, I tend to look for, and we can see back here, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it too well, but this is a nice, thick, healthy aerial root. And I have a few that are stemming from about, we'll call it this point right here. So this tells me that, okay, the chances of this plant surviving if I cut it right here with these nice thick aerial roots, which will now become its normal roots, its growth roots, uh, is very high. So I like to find as thick of aerial roots as I can. Now, also in the back of epis, uh, which you know a lot of plants have, they shoot off tiny like aerial, aerial root attachments that, uh, and I'll bring you guys in so you can see what I'm talking about. They give off these tiny aerial root attachments uh, as you see here. And that's kind of how that is, not kind of, but that's how they latch onto the pole. So I count on those to also help me in shooting off some roots once it gets into the new pot that I'm going to place it in. Okay, so like I said, I have one, two, three coming off of this point right here. So I'm going to say it is safe for me to cut here, which is still a, a good sized plant. Um, I'm gonna cut right here. We'll gamble, cut right there. And nice clean cut. And that's where we're at. So now that I've got my cut, remember I just showed you guys those tiny little roots that latch. Now I have to just sort of pry them off, get the big roots off. Now, if you're finding it difficult on a lot of these, you just you kind of, I, I end up just like scratching them off, but you can wet the plant or wet the pole and see if that'll loosen some of the roots. And this, it's just a slow pry. I don't want to pry it off and snap. Oh, so this, ooh, see, this is the size of one of these aerial roots. That's good. I'm just going to put that right back into a pot. Uh, but slowly, I'm just going to pry. Like I said, I don't want to do it just, I'm going to pick a good leverage point because I don't just want it to snap. But slowly, and there we go. So that's where we're at now. It, you, you get a better idea of how uh, giant the foliage is on this and I'll stand next to it here so you guys can kind of see compared to the size of my head the size of my arm you see how large this neon pothos has gotten I didn't think it was this big uh, but the foliage has just gone crazy now you can see why I am definitely uh, trying to keep the growth going and to see how large I can get the, the, the foliage to be now if it's anything like the golden pothos, as far as growth goes, I've shown you guys videos of that. Those, uh, the foliage on the golden pothos, wild, right? Which means, uh, I know people tend to think there's different versions. I, I took a store-bought tiny uh, foliage, tiny leaf uh, golden pothos, and I put it on my tree outside, and they're all giant now. It's just the growth, you know, it, it's achieving the growth that it can and the environment that's conducive to support that that growth. So I'm hoping the same thing happens with this. It just continues its growth. And these are the aerial roots that I'm hoping will continue in that small pot. And I'm putting in that small pot, that way it can get as much water as it needs. Uh, more water, the better, with fast uh, a fast draining mix, uh, which if you need a fast draining mix, on my page also a few videos back there is a my soil is potting mix video um, that's perfect that's what i use for all of these plants out here uh, but there we are we have our top cutting now a lot of people do like to uh, allow the butt of the cutting area to callus over uh, what i'll do is i'll i like to dab it into some type of growth hormone powder uh, or sometimes I just throw it back in there just like that. I'm not too concerned with this area. The roots will do what they need to do. Yeah, I do expect on losing maybe this bottom two, three uh, leaves. But my concern is the top half, which that foliage should continue. And there is a new leaf, but I had to cut it because 
that new leaf was getting damaged from hitting the top of the, the shade house. So let me put this down right here and then we'll move this over and you can see this plant has gone absolutely nuts. The floor of mine is uh, pea gravel. So it's drainage stone. So my plants, without telling me, or the aerial roots will shoot down, they'll get into the stone and they'll continuously begin to sprout out, which uh, allows the plant to further grow, right? Because the aerial roots are getting what they need whenever it rains and the water builds up or you know extra nutrients fall onto the floor. The roots that have navigated through the stone pick up all those nutrients and continue to feed the plant. So this is just different growth points that I have here. Um, and I'm probably gonna put a good por uh, size portion of this onto a tree that I have and see how uh, the neon pothos does in South Florida weather and see if maybe I can make it a little more sun resistant or sun tolerant and put it on the base of a tree and see what it does. Um, I also have another plant, which is a mottled leaf dragon, I believe is what it is. It came off of that. And I'm going to try to put that at the base of, uh, of a tree as well. But these are just the extra roots from this plant that kind of navigated its way to the bottom portion here. So let's move this out of the way. Oof. Into the background. I have several plants to do this to. This, woo, variegated epi over here and it's reached the top two so I have to do that one next and then I have a uh, Adansonii which is uh, which has achieved uh, mature leaves or mature foliage and that's ready to do that's ready for a repot too so I have a number of plants out here that <laughs> have been begging me for a repot and it is time and I'm just hoping to get through all of this okay so Where's my support? All right, so this is gonna be my new home for this. There we go, hooked right in. And there we have it. We have a small pot at the bottom and this is all just, that, that pot is just temporary. And this is where I just kind of fit it in to see how it's gonna fit. And what I'll do is I'll just spiral those aerial roots down in there, get them out of my way and then I'll see how this is gonna fit onto a new pole. And boom, there we are. So that's how this one is gonna look on a new pole. Still rather large, uh, but you can tell, and you'll be able to tell um, when somebody has chopped and put the top cutting into a new pole, cause the stem, the stem of these, and I'll show you, cause I know now it fits and all I need to do is throw some soil in there. But I'll show you right here, the stem is super thick, right? And it's only gonna get thicker. This isn't even the thickest that it gets. Like these, these become like, <laughs> I swear, they're like trees. Uh, but you can see how thick it is. So now the bottom will have this thick stem coming out of it. Whereas before it was a thin, and I'll show you guys that. It's just a thin, uh, stem that's coming out of that dirt there so that's where we're at with this giant foliage we know it fits i'm going to throw just a light bed of some soil or not soil because i don't use soil of potting mix down into the pot just to give it a nice base then i'm going to throw this in cover it up tie this up and then we're all done we let it do its thing i'm not going to bother it i'll give it a nice uh watering for the shock and we'll see where it takes us but before I do that, let me see if I can fit this stem into some growth hormone powder. So I grabbed some Root Boost. And hopefully, let's see if I can just get, oh, just fits, but I got some arrow roots that kind of block me. So what I'll do is I will shake some into the lid there. And then I'm just gonna dab the base of this plant right there. Like I said, I don't have time for this to callus over, but you can see there, that's how that looks.
if you have time for it to callus over, go for it. But I've been successful in the past with just dropping it into its new mix and tying it up. You really find out when you start growing outdoors or when you get deep, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just beginning my plant journey. But when you get uh, far enough, you start to understand these plants just really don't want you to bother them. As long as you give them the right climate, you feed them, uh, you can leave them alone. You can put them under a bench and they're going to grow. So don't freak out about putting in here. Don't think you got to do some water propagation with the bubbles going and all that stuff. If you're growing outdoors and you have everything you need uh, climate wise for to thrive, you can throw it right back into a pot and it's going to do its thing for you. I do it all the time with a lot of these chunks. I'll throw chunks on uh, direct soilless mixes and just put it under the bench and let it do its thing and they, it works. Uh, so. You start to understand these plants don't need to be babied as much as we tend to. But that's normal, especially at the beginning of your journey. I was afraid to do anything. Okay. All right. Let's go this way. All right, so all I'm going to do here so, is I'm just going to tie this up. That way I can focus on the soilless mix. good some quick knots and we're good so now that's upright it's on there I will do a couple more to further train it like I did the last one but in the meantime that's holding it up and I'm going to sh here let me fill a little bit more soil and then I'll just shove the aero roots back in So that way they can start growing vibrant roots for this plant to thrive. Now I don't expect this to spend much time in this small pot, but we are entering fall or we're in fall already, right? So things tend to slow down growth wise anyways. I do less watering. Actually, I really don't change my watering schedule down here. I just, I just keep it going. But as it gets colder, the sun shifts, things start going slower. Okay. I'll bring you guys in here so you can see. There you go. So you can kind of see what I'm doing. You see this one kind of poked right back out. I'll just shove it right back in. Because as we begin to water and do everything to this plants, they're just gonna wanna navigate down deeper into the pot, which is what I want. I want it to be the new root system for this plant. So there we are. It's that simple and then like I said, to further train this, we'll tie another point to make sure this stays on the right track up the pole. And these are just ties. These are uh, these are uh, just like plastic tomato vine ties. Uh, you can find them in pretty much any hardware store. I use them throughout the shade house here um, in addition to Velcro strips. Uh, so those are what I use pretty much to train the plants up the poles and that's pretty much all that there is to that now i just want to thank you all for joining me on this chop and prop of this neon pothos 
I, I am experiencing some sound difficulties, so I had to record this after the fact. But regardless, I appreciate you guys for joining me for yet another video. I hope you found this informative. Feel free to comment down below with any questions you have or any tips you have. Uh, like the video, share it if you think somebody else can benefit from it. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you guys as always. Lord Saint, over and out.